When I come up over the hill, coming into Petoskey from the south, and you come up on a day like this, you come up over the hill and suddenly there's that blue water of the lake right there. I get a feeling right here. And I've done that my whole life. Their sheer size defies superlatives. The Great Lakes hold six quadrillion gallons of fresh water, an unbelievable resource in a world that grows thirstier every year. Yet this incredible wealth of water is fragile. Water in its place in the Great Lakes St. Lawrence region has value. And that's something important to keep in mind. It's not about just what's the value of taking the water out and using it. Water in its place has value. But this unbelievable resource was once in such grave danger that it had to be rescued by the movement that included the first Earth Day in 1970. In June 1969, a spark from a passing train set fire to the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland. The event helped lead to the first Earth Day less than one year later and 50 years ago now. No one today could imagine Cleveland's beautiful river in flames. In 1968, Lake Erie was widely considered dead. The Grand Rapids Press asked if Lake Michigan faced the same fate. Dead alewives littered the shores. Pesticides, raw sewage, and garbage flowed into the lake. Oil, chemicals, and other industrial pollutants plagued the waters. Every one of those problems has either been greatly mitigated or solved. Thanks to the efforts following the first Earth Day, no one today is afraid that any of the Great Lakes is dying. Even the issues that remain, such as nutrient runoff and algae blooms, are being aggressively addressed throughout the lakes. Just the same, long closed industrial locations remain dangerous, with pollutants ranging from industrial solvents to heavy metals like mercury. Well, back in the 1980s, uh, the United States and Canada got together and they formed a list of the most polluted, most degraded places in the Great Lakes. And they called these places areas of concern. There are 43 total on the original list. In the United States, we're currently looking at 26 places. My kind of first question I had is, can we be good water neighbors around the Great Lakes Basin? And to that end, started the UIC Freshwater Lab. Train a new generation of water leaders, work on communicating water issues and building constituency, and also conducting research that is really interested in, in wondering how our region could move from a much maligned rust belt into the world's leading water belt. But the Great Lakes still face threats. Nutrient runoff and algae blooms remain a serious issue. If thousands of farmers contribute a little bit to the nutrient load independently, that's a difficult problem to solve. But collective action, like what followed from the first Earth Day, is in fact solving the problem. One example is in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Farmers in the lower Fox Valley, south of Green Bay, are working to make a difference. Farmers are learning to use cover crops to keep the nutrients and fertilizer in place and keep the soil from running off into the streams and the lakes. Probably the turning point uh, for me was uh, May 3rd, 2011. We've had uh, a huge rainfall um, at two in the morning. It was uh, a five inch rainfall within an hour, I believe it was, an hour and a half. Um, you know, the, the ditches were flowing over everything else and I remember our power went out in the dairy and my backup generator didn't work that day. Um, but uh, so we had to get back up and milking you know, so we got we got going but uh, I got several calls from neighbors. I couldn't honestly say that I was a good steward of the land that day. Bringing out that positive message of how we can utilize cover crops, how we can build soil health and how we can improve yields because it we need to do all we need to do all three things to protect the environment and also have uh, a sustainable and strong ag agricultural economy. One big issue that can instantly be solved is Line 5, the only oil pipeline that lies at the bottom of the Great Lakes. Built in 1953, it is in the Straits of Mackinac. 
It carries 23 million gallons of oil per day, 1 million gallons per hour. Ultimately, this pipeline has to go. We know that is its fate. And the question is, is it going to happen before the spill or after the spill? Line 5 has the potential to impact not only us today, but in the future, and whether we will have enough fresh water here and we'll be able to maintain what we have. I've seen the work done through the, the University of Michigan Water Center uh, that where they showed how quickly a spill would dissipate and spread across both northern Lake Huron and Lake Michigan. A thousand times worse if it happened when it was iced over, which it could very easily be then as well. So uh, line five, it needs to be shut down. Nagaskatoon makade bimide wabo ganawendan nabi. Take out the oil, take care of the water. Uh, we provide experiential learning opportunities aboard our traditionally rigged tall ship schooner. And the idea behind our experience is to introduce folks to Great Lakes ecology. Our under uh, or our overarching goals and everything that we do are to have folks fall in love with this resource. So we try to have everything that we do be a meaningful, powerful experience. We uh, kind of function under Jacques Cousteau's original beliefs that people protect what they love. And collective action will be needed to confront the greatest issues facing the Great Lakes. The biggest uh, kind of umbrella overriding issue that's affecting all of the others is climate change. I'm not sure what the climate is going to be 50 years from now, how fast climate change is coming. And so I'm not sure what grape varieties that I should plant in the ground now that will still work 40 years or 50 years from now. It seems too big to handle, but the same was true at the first Earth Day. I don't want us to be fatalistic about how we think about the Great Lakes. Things actually are getting a lot better. I guess I'm an elder statesman in terms of the, uh, being a former chairman and having had been in that position, but I really feel that our future is in good hands with the youth that are out there. Yet in the 50 years since the first Earth Day, the arc of our time has been improvement things have gotten a lot better. Together, we can solve the new issues facing these extraordinary bodies of water. <laughs>